just reassembling stuff um, in anticipation of fuel and starting problems being resolved. And um, annoyingly, the brackets aren't quite lining up. Don't know, I think maybe I didn't have the trumpets on or something when I measured that, so that's frustrating. It's not quite the same on the other side, which is confusing, um, but at the same time, easily resolved, I guess. Pretty sure I checked that, actually. Pretty sure I checked, fitted that. Uh, so I'm gonna put the tank in, just to see if that makes any difference, because obviously it has to all line up with that too. tank actually wants to go forward another couple of mil honestly to latch into the seat because um, those adjustments are as far forward as they can go and this one on this side is now kind of lining up actually so maybe I was right before not quite Near enough. Sure, with a little persuasion, it would. But then this side, we've gone way too far forward. Anyway, it all looks rather good on the surface. Love this tank pad, actually. It came from Eastern Europe. It took a long time to arrive, but it's just all the right colours. It's got the old gold and carbon fibery type look and of course my own invention yeah it's all looking quite good and I don't think we need the key fob protection element so that will leave that air scoop that I so carefully sculpted to bring in the air. Let's hope she starts up. The only thing I'm not sure about at this point in time is the, um, the F4 thing, actually. Uh, maybe it's a little bit small. Maybe it needs to come back a bit and up a bit, which is a shame because I've drilled the hole. Maybe that'll do it, just there, or maybe I'll go for a bigger one, honestly. Um, hmm, not sure. While we're on the subject of fixings, um, just this very day on the MV Augusta forum, um, this little carbon panel here, uh, as these two holes and that screws into that and on the other side of that there are some rather dodgy nuts as though they're not there anymore on mine and apparently it's a common fault that they fall out on the uh, 99 to 2009 so it took MV 10 years to sort the problem um, they fall out and they end up in the air intakes which is not, not a good idea uh, in those trumpets in there. Um, so I won't be replacing those with the standard item. Um, I'll have to think of another way of fitting this. And of course the solution for the, um, the carbon fibre strip is also close at hand. You remember these, I bought these for the seat. I probably won't even be using honestly. Lots of different sizes. Hopefully one will fit. Banking on this one. Yeah, that's pretty perfect. Just needs a little encouragement. Make sure it's not gonna, oops, drop somewhere it shouldn't. Yeah, it's in there somewhere. Get that out with a magnet. Um, anyway, yeah, 
I think that'll do the job nicely. I don't know what we did without these. Magnet on a stick. Brilliant. First discovered, uh, by me at least, um, when um, some geezer came to uh, service the pinball machine. And he had one. And it's like, that's brilliant. I need one of those. Sadly, I don't have any pinball machines here in the US. Um, my shared collection with my very best mate, Rob, is um, currently still in the UK and whittled down to, I think, four now. I think we had six or eight at the height of it. And uh, yeah, that's a whole nother story. So there's that rivet nut in place. Another one down there. And do the other side in a minute. They were just kind of big enough. So I actually just added a little super glue in there to hold them in. So I'll do the other side later. That resolves that problem and they won't be falling into any air intakes next time the air box is taken off. Then of course I've got to adjust those babies so that they fit too. Lots of little fiddle ass bits to get on with. And here's how we super glue. Uh, these guys without getting it all over your fingers. A little screwdriver. Just squeeze that on there, turn it around a bit, a bit more, quite the performance. And, and just slide it in there like that. Lovely jabbly. Also busy working out uh, some replacements for those stickers on the underside of that top lip of the fuel tank. Uh, playing around with some ideas. Uh, not sure which way I'm going to go yet. I'll probably print them out and stick them on. Uh, loosely just to see what they look like. Back to this air box and these um, rivet nuts of course uh, there's always one um, this one doesn't quite sit in because because that rivet is in the way so I'm gonna have to shorten one of these just to fit in that hole there. Took the speed triple out for a, a spin today and was looking at it in the parking lot and I thought about this. Cover up all that stuff in between. A nice little grill. Oh, I thought that was a good idea. So I've cut it out already. Uh, it's just literally slipped in place, but I like that. I'm not so sure about the sticker, I might be taking that off, but that's been on there for a while. So remembered I had these, which were exhaust brackets uh, mounts for the MV, and they would fit beautifully. They fit perfectly on the rear footrest mount, and then this boy would swing up and match up one of those holes somewhere. So... I think we just need a washer on the front end too to stop that coming through. Trouble is, I've only got one of these bolts. I have to get another one of those. Not the finished product because those bolts are all just a little bit... I just had them lying around. Um, but it's in place and it's secure and yeah, I kind of like that. And there's that grill that I put in there that was a void before. I think that's nicer with that. Lovely. Nice to take care of the Triumph for a change. Love riding this bike. Well, the guy in Florida has finally agreed to ship another part because just maybe it got lost in the mail after two months. So I'm um, still waiting for that. But at the same time, I don't think it's actually the fitting um, that's stopping the bike from starting. 
So I'm going to do some stuff at the weekend, hopefully, and experiment with the original fuel hose, which is this one here, and fitting it to that that top bit. So it's the second fitting, um, not this one on the right, but the one to the left. It's just long enough still, despite the fact I've chopped bits off. Um, so I'm going to give it another go. I'm also going to do some crazy stuff before that, just to make sure we've got fuel pumping. Um, and it's not the fuel pump that's a problem, but it doesn't sound like it for sure. Yeah, so it's that one on the bottom now, I think, unless I have to spin the video around. That's the, that's the one that the shortest hose has to reach. Ah, there you go. That's the perfect video angle. So, yeah, um, the rearmost left um, intake, and there's the pipe just underneath it with the fitting on the end of that. It should just reach, so we'll give it a go. This week, I've mainly been cleaning exhaust pipes. Uncle Tim will be very proud of me, Mr. Purple Helmet. Look at that. Sweet. I might do the other side if I've got nothing better to do. I hate cleaning. Put some new grommets in. Be rude not to. As soon as I got them. So I can test this properly. I'm looking at the manual. What a good boy. Instructions. So the rear which is the one that's been troublesome, is the fuel return. And therefore, if we connect everything apart from that and hit the fuel pump, it should piss fuel out. So that means connecting this one, which was not troublesome, turning the bike on, hitting the fuel pump, and then seeing if it pisses fuel out of this. That means there's fuel going up to the fuel rail. And then we know at least we've got fuel and apparently we've got a spark. So then I have no idea what the problem would be, but let's find out. Nice clean Allen bolt in place of that screw that I just had to lying around. And I forgot something on this side. Uh, there's the, uh, the seat lock there. So I need access to that. I'm going to have to cut a hole. There it is, all marked up, ready to go. Not sure whether to use one of these or one of these. This is less likely to snatch, but it's really soft metal, so um, this was fine, as you can see. Lovely clean hole, beautiful. Beautiful, except the hole has to be big enough to fit the whole damn key into because it's recessed quite a lot. Now, of course, if you're using one of these, you have to go large to start with, not smaller, because now I've lost the pilot hole, right? So now I'm gonna to have to use that big boy. Well, it's tight, but it's in there. Big asshole. Big asshole. Um, yeah. So having burnt out two drill bits, um, drilling out these hinges, because it turns out they're brass underneath all that. Um, so that was interesting. Anyway, um, then I would have had to drill out the other end for the rivet. So I've gone with my little T-square, because I've got a few of these, uh, and that will give me a number of options on the hole. So we'll see how that fits in and um, mark it up accordingly. Perfectly mounted at the back and marked in the hole accordingly. Still shifting around a bit, isn't it? Yeah. Okay. We can afford a little bit of wiggle room because we're using these kind of expandable panel mounting things. Um, so yeah. There's a little bit of scope. Yeah, that's hot. Wow. Well, 
taking the machine gun approach. I think we are about ready for the fuel circulation test. Wish me luck. Minor relocation required and we are ready to test. Ready as we'll ever be anyway. Okay, ignition on. Now for the fuel. Could get messy. Or not. Nothing coming out. Interesting. Sounds like it's pumping. Not a drop. And just checking up at that top connector there because I didn't actually crimp it in place because um, I figured the fuel would take the line of least resistance. Um, but just checking that it hasn't been leaking out of there and it isn't either. That's annoying. What this hopefully means is that I haven't blown up anything in the electrics, which didn't appear to have done because all the fuses were fine and all the relays seemed to kick in. Um, what it does mean, I'm not sure. Blockage pump seems to be working, which is what failed before. Um, mm, confused. Interesting, when I disconnect the fuel in, um, there was a little bit of fuel on that and then having guess released the pressure from the system it is actually dripping not a lot but dripping out of there which would indicate that there was some fuel in the system bloody hell I almost forgot the long-awaited original plastic fuel connector uh, finally arrived from Florida because they sent out a replacement, so thank you for that. That's now crimped on both ends, the original type plastic fitting. I don't think that in itself is going to make any difference. Um, it is the original hose. I'm hoping it's just about long enough. Um, so we'll see if that makes a difference. Step by step diagnosis, ruling out one thing after another. It's the idea anyway. Okay, we're all plugged in. And uh, so we'll turn it on, I guess. The ignition. Fuel on. Nothing visibly leaking yet. Never hopeful. Sounds more hopeful. No, still nothing. <laughs> no fuel leaks at least. Well, I didn't think that was going to be the issue, honestly. Um, I think I'm getting fuel. I think the spark tester thing is not giving me a accurate reading. Um, I would really appreciate if anyone knows what the hell it might be, given that I arced the battery out, have I screwed the coils? Um, 
the fuses, I promise, I've checked all of them. Um, they're all okay, including the biggies on the alternator. Um, yeah, I'm going to have to admit defeat unless any of you guys can suggest anything and I'm going to have to take it to a shop because it's kind of beyond me at this stage. Also got this because all these babies live in the garage and it makes sense to have a mains powered air pump rather than start the FJ up every time, drag it all outside. Good news is the new stickers are in. So these old ones that were identical with a black F and a blue four are redundant. Because we now have the mounting holes in different locations and they are in the black. So they will mount nicely. Just spot some air bubbles, need to get rid of those. Always nice to get some new toys, even if they're just tools. Uh, so this is a uh, rivet thing for uh, specifically for these uh, rivet nuts. And um, very good indeed. An amazing value. Less than 50 bucks for the whole kit. And there it is in place on that side, ready for the, my little number. There's the other side, even neater and tidier. you be wanting to know how it works. Well, it's pretty cool. It's like my other riveting tool. It's a conventional riveter with this fitting here. Um, but you simply unscrew that top bit. First of all, you take this off as well. This is your teeth for your conventional rivet. There we go. Now that goes through there. This long tube for the rivet nuts goes in the back here. Open it up and it'll just go a little bit further. And all you do is pop the sleeve on the top, screw your nut, rivet nut in place. Tight as you can. Because that end is threaded. So use use this bit here, which you can see is screw that up on the nut while holding the nut the other end. See it's just protruding. Then you throw that through your hole with the arms out spread and just clamp it in and you'll see what's going to happen here I can get it to focus there you go as you can see it's pulled the uh, the uh, serrated bit if you like collapsible section so that you've got a lip and then you simply unscrew the device from the nut using that thing at the end there. There it is, the piece that gets clamped onto the other side or whatever you just popped it through. Marvellous. You can never have too many riveting tools. Because we like rivets, they're interesting, they're riveting. Obviously not the screw I'm going to use because that doesn't blend in at all but there you go, there it is fitted. Lovely. Well, I think that's about it for this week, honestly. Um, I've had a pretty crappy week and lots of people irritating me. So, um, to avoid further irritation, I'm not going to attempt any more diagnosis of why this baby won't start. I have called in my mate Derek, who's coming to pick it up on Saturday. So, um, I'll give him the lowdown and I'm sure he will fix it. And that'll be exciting because that means I can put it together and take it out on the road to see what falls off. 
So thanks for watching again, and uh, do tune in regularly. There's plenty of other stuff to watch now. If you haven't subscribed, get on with it. And um, yeah, encourage others to watch my lunacy. <laughs>